I have a question for you. When you're writing reports, documents, or research articles, what software would you use? And I know the common answer would probably be a word processor such as Microsoft Word, Google Docs, or Overleaf if you're writing research articles. However, when it comes to time to share it, typically the person opening up the documents would need to have the software pre-installed. And so there's another way. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could create your very own Streamlit web application that you could share with your friends and colleagues, and they will have instant access to the contents of your research article or report. And best of all, there's nothing to install. The only thing that they need is internet access and a web browser. And so if this sounds like fun, let's dive in. And before we begin, let me show you the research paper Streamlit app that we're going to build today. So you could head over to research-paper.streamlit.app and this is the app. So you're going to see that it looks like a research article. It comes equipped with the article type, the title of the research, the author name, the affiliation, the abstract, along with the keywords of the article, the introduction section, along with some lorem ipsum starter text. We have the materials and methods here, the sections in it, tables, and the great thing is it's interactive as well. You can click on it and it'll sort accordingly. Another section, you could even add equations to it using LaTeX. So this is natively supported in Streamlit. And now we go to the results and discussion section. And then we have the figure and the figure image here is a line chart of Seattle weather data. And you could interact directly with the figure here. For example, if you click on it, the image will be updated. See, updated in real time. You can even adjust the image as well. You could zoom in, zoom out. Another figure image here showing data for the quarters of a hypothetical stocks data set here. And it shows the number of quarters that you clicked on. So if you click on quarter one and four, it'll show quarters one and four. And then you have the conclusion section. And finally, you have the acknowledgement. And the color here could be adjusted. This is yellow. It could be changed to pink or blue as well and green. And then you have the reference section. And this is made in Streamlit. And the great thing about this is that this particular research article is already hosted on GitHub. And as a result, it will foster collaboration. And the GitHub repo itself could be made public or also private. And in the meantime, you could also deploy the Streamlit app. And the Streamlit app could be viewed, for example, from your peers while you write the research article in real time. So as soon as you update the data table figures, the rendered research article here will be updated in real time. All right, and so now that you see what this app is all about. Let's have a look under the hood on how you could build one. So you could go to github.com slash data professor, go to the repositories and then find research paper, the paper repo. And so you can see here that I've used the Streamlit app starter kit to quickly prototype this repo. I just forked it from here and you could do the same thing as well. And after I forked the repo here, I just modify the streamlit app.py here. Or if I need additional Python libraries, I could add them into the requirements.txt as shown here. So in this particular paper repo, I'm using Streamlit, NumPy, Pandas, Plost for the rendering of the data visualization, and also the Streamlit AG grid for the data frame. Let's have a look at the so let me explain to you what the app is all about. And in the meantime, we're going to split this into two screens. GitHub here and the app. And I'll make it bigger fonts. All right, so the first few lines of code here is to import the necessary libraries. So here we have Streamlit as ST, we import NumPy as NP, we import Pandas as PD, and then from ST AG Grid, we import AG Grid function, and then we import the PLOS library. And so the data here is coming from the PLOS library. So the hypothetical stocks data. So we create the stocks variable, and it is essentially a Pandas data frame. And then the data here is shown as follows. So you have the following columns. You have the company data as shown here in this particular table, table two, right? You have the company column right here, first column, and then you have quarters one, two, three, four, right here, quarters one, two, 
3, and 4. And then the data is displayed in the table. And the entire data set is here found in the PLOS repo. And it is created by Tiago, one of the co-founders of Streamlit. All right, and so let's hop over to lines 18 now. So we have the research article shown here, research article, and it is written in markdown syntax. So we have the asterisk before and after the research article, which makes the text in italic. And then we have the title command here, st.title, and then inside is the name of the research article. So here it is writing an interactive research article using Streamlit. And the great thing is it is for free. And as mentioned already, it fosters collaboration with your peers and fellow co-authors. And then you could share the rendered app instantaneously. You could even take it on the go while you're on the train and read over the research article as your peers are updating it, either the data or the figures or even the text. And if you need to make some additions to it, you could edit the code directly on GitHub, right? And everything is version to control. So that's the great thing about it. And it's Pythonic. You're using Python to actually write your research article. So you're bypassing Google Docs or even Overleaf. And you're using pure Python for writing your research article. How cool is that? All right, and so let's move on. Lines 21, st.markdown to write the name of the author, which is my name here. And then line 24 is the affiliation. So you can replace this with your own university's affiliation or your company's affiliation. And then we have the st.header for the abstract. It's shown here. st.header is like heading one, h1 in HTML. And then we have the box, the blue box that you see here is st.info. And at the bottom for the acknowledgement, you see that it is a yellow box. So that one is, let me show you, st.warning for the yellow box. And for the green one, I think it's st.success. And for the red one or pink one, it is st.error. So you could choose the color that you like. Okay, let's move that back up. And here, lines 33, we have st.markdown. And then we have the keywords to make the text bold. We have double asterisk before the keywords. And then we have the actual keyword to be in italic. So we have a single asterisk here before and after the word. Line number 35, we have st.header to make the introduction as the H1 heading. And then st.markdown because we want it to span multiple lines or multiple paragraphs as shown here in three paragraphs. We're using the triple quotation marks here to encapsulate the three paragraphs. And lines 44, we have the materials and methods section. Line 46, we have the subheader or the subsection. And this is just an arbitrary text from the lorem ipsum generator. And as you might have saw in a prior video showing the use of Streamlit Faker library, you could also use that to generate your lorem ipsum text generator or even the, the figure images as well. Okay. Line number 51, we have the caption for the table, table one caption here. As input argument, you have table one, and then you have double asterisk for table one to make it bold. And then you have the caption here, Seattle weather data. And then for the data frame here, we're using the AG grid to show the data frame. And then we set the height here, this one to be 300. And then for the next table, table two, we set the caption. So you'll notice that the caption text is slightly smaller than the typical text that you see either with using the markdown, st.markdown or st.write. All right, and now we could move on to line number 60, which is another subsection. So we're using the subheader command and the arbitrary text here. And then we use st.markdown on line 61 until 63 for the paragraph here. And the cool thing is you could include an equation written in latex. And so you could have that on line 66 until line 70. So this equation is beautifully created in latex. Line number 73 is another subsection and the contents is underneath it in st.markdown. So you'll notice a pattern, right? You have the subsection using subheader command and then you have the text using the markdown. And if you want the latex equation, you use the st.latex command. If you want the table, you could use st.write and then the pandas data frame. Or in our case here, we're using the he grid. And if you want to display the figure image, I'm gonna show you that in just a moment right here. So we'll move to line 78, which is the results and discussion. And then you notice another subsection here. And then you have the figure image for figure one. Let's have a look. So you notice that at the top of the image, it allows you to create a select box so that you could interact directly with the figure image. And in the select box here, we're creating a variable called selected temperature. 
And here, we're using the st.multiselect command. And the input argument here is select data, and then we provide the range of data. So we have here a list of the two variables, a list of the two columns, the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature. And then we're displaying it twice because we want both of them to be selected from a possibility of two, okay? So if you want only one to be selected by default, you would then remove one of them. Okay, and so the data here is coming from the Seattle weather data, which we had defined earlier on the early lines here in line number 15. So the Seattle weather data is for figure one here, and the stocks data will be for figure two that you'll see right here. Again, the data is shown in the table here, in these two tables. Okay, let's move back. And in X and Y, we define the date and the selected temperature from the select box. And then we have the caption underneath it using the st.caption. And then we use the markdown of double asterisk to bold the text. And then we have another subsection and another paragraph of text. Underneath it, we have the figure for figure two. So in a similar fashion, we're using multi-select to allow the users to select the particular column to display. And by default, we're displaying all of them against all of them by default. Okay, and so we define the necessary parameters here for the data visualization. And then we have, again, st.caption to display the caption of the image. Finally, we have the conclusion section, which is using the st.header command. And then the paragraph, st.markdown. And then the acknowledgement section here, st.header. And then we have the yellow box here, st.warning. So you want other color, st.error, st.success, st.info. Okay, so you could dig in the Streamlit documentation for the other usages of the other boxes here. And finally, in the last block of code here, lines 121, we're using the st.header for defining the reference section. And then the last command here, st.markdown, we're displaying the reference section, paper 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as shown here, using the numbered list. One, two, three, four, five. All right. You can even bold or italic the text as well. So yeah, this is a very awesome way for you to write your research article. And the great thing is it allows you to collaborate with your co-authors. It allows your co-authors to see the paper live in real time as the paper is being updated on GitHub. Another advantage is that all of the history of edits is version controlled directly on GitHub. And I'm eager to know, is there any research journal that you are aware of that allows you to submit your paper directly as a GitHub repo? And if so, let me know in the comment section down below. And perhaps this will be a revolutionary way to write a research article. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you agree or not? Please drop a star emoji if you reached this far and smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on notifications so that you'll be notified of the next video. And happy streamlining!